Hey, it's Machi from Ranchelio Group North America, and today we're going to go over the physical installation of the Egro Next Touch Coffee, which is our four hopper bean to cup option at Egro. Um, we're going to go through all the things that need to get connected, the tools that you're going to need, uh, and all that fun stuff. So, this is a 20 amp machine. Uh, of course, looking at your pre-installed checklist, uh, you'll be able to see that 20 amp machine uh, requires a water hookup as well as a drain hookup. Uh, you do have two drain lines still, uh, similar to the Agro 1 series and the Agro Next Espresso series. One drain is the main drain here, the other drain is an exhaust drain and emergency drain in case anything overpressurizes and things like that. Um, this unit that you uh, see right here next to me, this is the model that has also the cool coffee module, which is really the most difficult thing to uh, kind of just make sure everything's connected correctly and hook up. Uh, if you don't have the cool coffee module, all you have to do is really just place this machine on the counter, connect it to water, connect it to the drain, connect it to power, and then uh, you're good to go. Uh, but we'll go over this machine, how it's laid out, we'll go over how to hook this up properly, uh, hoppers, things like that. In part two, we're actually going to go through the user interface and I'll show you how to make sure that software is up to date, uh, that we have, you know, things like graphics and parameters are properly uh, updated as well. A uh, few things, uh, if you get the model with the cool coffee module, you're actually going to have three boxes. You're going to have a box with the machine itself, you're going to have a box that is exactly the same size as the one that the machine came in, has the cool coffee module in it, and then you're going to have a small box that has two of these. These are our coffee hoppers. This one actually that I have in front of me here is the prototype version. Uh, if you're uh, fortunate enough to have one of our early machines, you're going to have one of these hoppers, otherwise you'll have the new one that has a clear, uh, clear top. Basically, uh, it is a... Uh, our machine has four hoppers, and the way that that works is that each hopper has two separate sides. Uh, so that's how you get four hoppers, basically. Uh, two physical hoppers with a divider in the middle. Uh, each division has its own auger system to dose. Uh, this machine does come with only one grinder, so there's a whole dosing mechanism of which coffee's been selected, and it dosing and things like that. Basically, two coffees in here. You have an opening right here. This is for your cleaning chute. If you twist that, it'll lock it down. If you twist it a little bit more, it'll actually latch our cover onto here so you can't lift it up. This little knob here is actually a key, so if you turn it all the way to the lock position, you can actually remove it. Uh, so if for whatever reason you get a hopper that doesn't have this guy on there, uh, just check the box. It might have just popped out uh, during transit. Uh, but yeah, the hopper is relatively simple. Uh, basically has two auger systems on top of the machine. There's uh, four motors that operate the auger systems. The little U-shaped uh, connection points on top of the machine, those are uh, basically where the auger systems mount, but also they have a light sensor in there to make sure that the hopper is filled. Uh, we'll go over all of that um, a little bit. And of course, you're not just going to be looking at me slightly out of focus with the machine in focus. We're going to get some additional bonus shots uh, in here if I haven't already. Now, of course, because of quarantine, um, I'm not able to do this in person with you, and yeah, and I'm doing this in my home office uh, with just a camera, so bear with me a little bit. Uh, things that you're going to need for this install, of course you're going to need your standard tools, wrenches, uh, screwdrivers, things like that. Uh, to make this super, super easy, make sure you have needle nose pliers, Bring a USB stick with the most up-to-date parameters and most up-to-date graphics for whatever client you're going to go see. Uh, if you have the ability, please bring a laptop or a device that is able to connect to the internet and connect a USB stick to it uh, so you can download files just in case. Uh, if you're out for us to do an installation, we're going to try to make sure that you have the most up-to-date information possible. Uh, so check your email before you head out. Give us a call uh, in the office. We'll make sure that you're all set up. Um, we want to make sure that it's as easy for you in the field as possible. 
Um, so of course, you know, simple things. Uh, if you have a pair of these, these are really nice uh, Kipex uh, hose pliers. These are metric. Um, these are really, really great. I cut these from my colleagues in Switzerland. Um, basically, they allow you to grab the internal hoses and pull them out of the quick disconnect fittings a lot easier. These are fantastic. Um, metric Allen keys are really nice uh, in case you have to work on the pistons or check something like that. Of course, the most important tool to have on this machine is a 7mm um, Allen or 7mm socket. Because that, of course, allows you to open up the front door, allows you to swing open up the brew group, take out some internal panels, which are going to make our lives a lot easier. So, a few things that are going to happen. Uh, you're going to get to the side, of course, you're going to put the machine first on the counter. You, if they're going to be doing the option of the under counter ground chute, where the chute basically dispenses the pucks through the counter to a trash can, you're going to have in a box a tube like this and a funnel. Um, this tube, of course, goes inside of the machine, and the way to do that, we open up the front door. If you have the standard machine without this option, you just have your standard grounds bin. But then there's a 7 millimeter screw right here, of course, just so that we all know. That's your main water shutoff for the machine. Power button, USB port, right? Simple enough, power button, USB, water shutoff. Seven mil, loosen that up, and you're able to open up the front of the machine, as simple as that. So, these of course need a hole to be drilled through in the counter. The easiest way to do that is to use uh, the cutout sheet that we sent to the contractors. But for whatever reason, let's say the hole isn't cut out, well, I wanted to wait for you to bring in the machine. Well, the easiest way to then get everything lined up, put the machine on the counter, place it where you want it, seven millimeter that I just unthreaded myself, um, another seven millimeter hex screw right there. Under that, you can swing out your burger. This is the same way that you would install this. Well, all you need to do is just drop it in through that hole right there, and then basically trace underneath where that little guy is. You can also, if you want to just set, you know, make the hole a little bit bigger, just go in and just trace it through here. So, in case the holes aren't drilled in the counter, just put the machine on the counter, place it where you like it, talk to the, you know, on-site contract construction manager, talk to the GM, say, this is exactly where you want it because we're going to drill that hole, we can't go back from that and then basically you can drill this hole and put this guy through. Uh, for now, we're not going to be putting this guy through because of course my counters are not drilled for it here, which is why I have the old uh, standard knock box. Now, what you're going to see when your uh, machine is delivered and you're going to get some fun TV magic here, look at this. This is not attached. Um, the machine itself is going to have a side panel on it, but this cool coffee module is not going to have a side panel here, and it's not actually going to have a side panel here. The reason is, this side panel, when you get the cool coffee module option, gets removed and placed on the outside of here. Simple as that. So, when we ship them, the cool coffee modules come with no panels, and we put all the panels on the machine. What we're going to want to do of course, once this machine is placed where we want it, we're going to open up the front, oh, swing out our brew group, and then actually remove this backsplash. There's three 7mm hexes that hold it together, one, two, and three. So we undo those, and of course with my TV magic I already took two of them out, and we're only keeping the top one in. We undo those. Put those in a safe place. Then you could tilt forward this backsplash, pull it up, give it a little bit of a 30 degree twist, and then you could just remove it just like that. What this allows us to do is to get familiar with the inside of the machine, but also hook up all the water hookups that we have to hook up for the cool coffee module. Of course, when you look into here, main grinder, the grinder, if you look all the way to the top, up to the side, that's its adjustment motor right up there. You have your coffee boiler, you have your brew valve, which has the parallel bypass on it. You have your incoming flow meter, which is a nice little brass plate with the white flow meter on it. Your pump motor's right here. 
There's our water shut off. It currently has nothing connected to it, which is why it's shut off there. Of course, my water's also turned off, but you know, better to be safe than to flood your home office. Um, and some other connections. On the side here, if you take off the side panel, you'll notice that is your analog gauge for your pressure uh, to make sure that your pressure is running correctly. Standard, we set these up, machines up to run at three bar, but for whatever reason, uh, should the roaster like a parameter change or we want to run it something differently because of the parameters, uh, we might set it all the way up to something like five bar. Of course, the more pressure you have, the more crema you're going to develop. And because we're making bean and cup coffee, that's supposed to resemble drip coffee, uh, even though the brew method's slightly different, and we could have a whole, you know, hour-long discussion about that. Uh, we want as little pressure as possible for the most part. Of course, to adjust that pump pressure, there's that pump adjustment screw at the back end of the pump. The easiest way to adjust that pump, uh, that pump adjustment is actually to take off that back panel and go in there with a flathead screwdriver. If you do have a small 10 mil ratchet screwdriver or something like that, you can get in there and adjust it that way. But if you have everything connected, it's easier just to take off that back panel. So, we have our machine kind of set up like this on the counter where we want it. We have the front opened up, we have that side panel off. Next, we're going to grab our module here. I'm going to loosen up the top screws. We can take off this little aesthetic piece that is for the top here. Basically what happens is this module here hangs on the side of this machine just like a side panel. So it actually hooks on here and then there's hooks on the bottom that hook into the frame. The screw that is behind this front piece here you have to actually undo all the way at which point you can take off our front panel, right? TV magic. I don't even have to use a screwdriver. Um, and you're able to get into here. As you can see, there's a lot of room in here, and opening this up is going to give us a lot of room to be able to connect everything. So, we're going to get everything placed and start connecting our connections. Yours are going to be labeled, of course. They're going to be numbered. There's a total of six connections. There is, uh, on the labels that you're going to have on your machines, only five. The, the sixth connection that is not labeled is actually this exhaust drain hose that hangs out by the pump here. But first, before we get to the hydraulic connections, we're going to reach into here and grab our electrical connection, which is also hanging out on the other side there, and we're going to snap it together. And then we can just push it back into that side there, so that that's out of the way. Next, up here we have a little Y. And this little Y is our brew connection. So our brew valve is all the way up here. Um, so what we're gonna, we can of course get into there and start connecting that. But first, I'm gonna get the ones that are a little bit easier. So if we use relatively tight, so we're not gonna connect that just yet. We're actually going to reach in just next to it, which is this line right here. This is our return line. This is the line that goes all the way through to the front spout. We're going to fish it through the back, get our panel nice and close, and then that's going to connect to this front valve that has this little exhaust. Now, it's going to connect to the back of it, to the front of it. That drain that I was talking about, that gets fished around. That connects right there. And there's one more little guy hanging out, which is our actual like, bypass bypass, not the parallel bypass. I know, naming. But yeah, we actually have a parallel bypass and a bypass. The bypass is direct water. The parallel bypass is engaged when the brew group is actually functional. So this is our actual bypass line. This guy goes through the big opening and to the valve all the way in the back here, which is basically the valve where the brew, our brew goes in on top. Our bypass comes in from the bottom. That's where that connects. And then we have our two lines here. These are our inbound lines for our pump water. So as we get connecting, we're slowly going to bring them together, connect our bottom, make sure that we can grab, connect our top, make sure that our brew valve is actually connected. If this one gives you trouble because it's really, really long, just close the door a little bit. It'll give you a little bit of slack that way. 
because I've taken these out a couple times, let's grab our pliers and make sure that they're snapped in all the way so we don't get nice leaks anywhere. And the last one is our inbound water. And it gets snapped into place. Cool. So we're just going to make sure that all of those are nice and tight. As you can see, slowly closing how far this swings out and getting it connected. Now you can just hook it on and uh, connect from there, but I find that having it separated a little bit just gives us a little bit more room to fish things out, make sure that, uh, you know, we're not injuring ourselves on the sheet metal, things like that. Now one thing that we're not going to do is we're not going to hook it up up here just yet. And the reason is it's going to be uh, more beneficial for us to leave this open uh, and leave this unhooked so that we can actually take this top off later on to make sure that our grinder calibration is correct. Now for 90% of the machines, leaving the benching process here in uh, Ranch Hill Group North America, the grind calibration is already going to be set. However, the machines uh, that are out there right now that y'all are going to be installing uh, were kind of left the factory a few months ago before quarantine. They've been sitting on a pallet. So we're going to need to take this top off and confirm that that grind calibration is where the roasters wants it because we've moved it around a couple times. But with that, this is all now connected. You can, if you have your water hooked up and your drain hooked up, you can turn on the water just to make sure that you're not leaking anywhere. It's not really going to flow too far. It's just going to flow in and then into the boiler. With this, um, this is connected. These are guys are hooked up. Um, so, which is really, really nice. We're not going to put the grinders on. That's going to be one of the last things that we're going to do. Uh, but this is basically the fast hookup. The next thing that I would recommend doing, making sure that of course the power is on, is to actually undo the two screws in the back so you can take off the back panel. Do the same thing to the ones on the side here so you can pop off the side panel. Which is going then to allow you to remove this top. And if we remove this top, you'll notice there is an electrical connection with a board because you have a bunch of auger motors that control the hoppers. So what you do is you just kind of twist, twist it off to the side like this. You can kind of hide it right here. Um, but what this is going to allow you to do is to actually get in and view the grinder from the top because on the top of the grinder collar, there's actually a factory red marking which you can't see from the front. So it's kind of annoying that we have to go all the way through this to see it, but this is the easiest way to make sure that that calibration is 100% correct. We're going to basically look at the teeth count um, that's supposed to be on here. Currently mine's set at 11 teeth from the red marking of the zero. Now, I would usually say 11 is good, but we're also going to, I'm going to say, refer back to an email that I would have sent you about the, um, about what that marking should be. Uh, per the roaster's request. Once you do that, and the way that we adjust this is for programming, and I'll go through that, uh, when you turn the machine on, uh, you can basically then close this guy, put all the panels back on, and uh, call it a day. Of course, as with any installation, I don't like putting uh, like the backsplash in and the side panels on until I'm 100% happy with everything just to make sure that we're all good. Now, um, real quick, well, not real quick, we're gonna chat about it for a minute. Um, I'm gonna move this panel off to the side so it doesn't go slamming somewhere. If you're requested to change out the parallel bypass on the machine because of the restriction points, this is what you're gonna have to do. You're gonna have to open up the machine, Take out that backsplash that we've already removed because we just installed the machine. And then all the way in here, where you have your brew valve, which is actually labeled on the electrical connection as brew valve, but it's this guy right here which has an exhaust line on it. There's a Y. On that Y, the one that is marked blue, on that quick disconnect fitting, that is your bypass line. So if you have to replace a bypass line and it's the option that you have to replace the whole line, 
you're going to have to undo it there and replace it with the kit. Now, if uh, your bypass option is to cap it and you get caps, you're just going to replace this water line. You're going to basically undo it and cap it with that red little plunger. Now, you can't just cap it here. You also have to cap it on the other end or replace the fitting on the other end. So if we move this guy, separate it a little bit, that Y that's up there from the brood up, one of those, if you tug on it, one way or the other, is also the bypass. So you might need to unplug it there uh, and change things out. Now, if we are going to be changing out the bypass, I'm going to make sure that you guys know about it and have the kits, uh, whether it's the restrictors that look like... Take a look here. Like these little guys on a pinwheel that have some restriction numbers, um, they might just come to you uh, in a nicely little marked baggie. Um, but whether it's those or some other things, uh, it's changing out the parallel bypass, which changes the brew ratios a little bit, and some roasters choose to do that. I will send those out to you and make sure that you have them before we install the machine. By the way, I'm talking to the camera and I'm realizing right now that uh, my face isn't in the camera. You can only see my hands and I do apologize, but I wanted a little bit more of the machine in here. Uh, and there's just not enough depth in this room with the lens that I have. Um, but anyway, parallel bypass. I'll do a complete uh, side thing on it uh, should you need it. Basically, this is the quick hydraulic install of the machine. Next, uh, we're going to turn around uh, once I run power. And we'll be able to go through kind of the UI and the simulated parts of the UI so that uh, you can see everything that you need to see.